The 1960s is probably my favorite era because it's the first time pizza was added to the menu. I can just tell you, and this is still true today, that pizza is by far the most popular lunch day. Hi, I'm Lisa Valenti, registered dietitian with Healthline. Today I'm going to be watching and reacting to a video called I Cooked 100 Years of School Lunch. Let's dive in. Today, we're gonna to be recreating and tasting 100 years of school lunches. Starting off with 1910, a school lunch only cost three cents, and this is what a fridge looked like. So in 1910, schools weren't actually required to provide lunch for students. A lot of students brought their lunch from home. The lunch that the school did provide wasn't the best option. It was usually like a pecan soup and like a slice of bread and some rice. This is what they had to work with at the time. And you know what? I'm actually excited to try it. All right, here's a nice. I mean, that doesn't look half bad. You've got some split pea soup. Canned soups are higher in sodium, but split peas are a great source of fiber and protein, so you're getting a little bit of that nutrients into your kiddos. And then a side of rice, side of bread. If this was today, I'd love to see some of those grains on the side be whole grains. Uh, maybe add a little more variation with fruit or a different vegetable. But in 1910, I'm not exactly sure how much prep equipment they had in school kitchens. I brought my friend Brian to come taste test all of these with me, and we're gonna rate them from one apple to five apples. One being the worst, five being the best. Let's go for a bite. Cheers. Tastes like I just ate a chalkboard. It's very salty. It seems kind of boring. I mean, what, what if we did it with the rice? Let me try it with the rice. Maybe the, with the rice makes it better. There we go. It's kind of a little bit better, like the rice balance. The rice. Better. The, the rice definitely balances it out. I give this a two apples out of five. How about you? I'd say an apple and a half. All right, let's move on to 1920. I don't know how many kids today would love getting canned split pea soup in their lunch plate, but I'm sure some might appreciate it. And nutritionally, you definitely could do worse than split pea soup. Where school lunch only costs seven cents, and this is what fridges look like. We're now in the roaring 20s. 10 years later, school lunches maybe got a little bit better because of what health experts told parents and schools. So they started providing students with vegetables. As you can see, I'm making frozen vegetables, and this is what they used at the time to make the process quicker and easier. Surprisingly, they all- I have to say, I love frozen vegetables in my house too. If you buy frozen vegetables, they're just as nutritious as fresh and they last a lot longer. Surprisingly, they offered students grilled cheese. They thought cheese might have some protein and calcium in it. And speaking of calcium, cheese does have protein and calcium in it. They introduced milk for the very first time and it's in school lunches till this day. So 1920 school lunch was a grilled cheese sandwich with a side of vegetables, a piece of bread, and some milk. We've officially made it. Okay, I think this actually looks really great, except for the whole serving a sandwich with a side of bread thing. I feel like they could have maybe gotten a little more creative, maybe some fruit, maybe something with some more protein in it on the side of that grilled cheese sandwich. And then milk on the side, I feel like milk as a beverage, we could do a whole video on it. Um, but for school lunch, I like seeing that it's got some protein in it, it's got some nutrients. Kids don't have a lot of time to eat, so a beverage that delivers some nutrition is actually great if they're eating really quickly and then they get to few sips of milk in them. Let's see what they think of the taste. We've officially made it to the 1920s where they're having grilled cheese, vegetable, and bread. I think the two bread is like a little redundant, but yeah, cheers. I'm excited <laughs> for this. Yeah. You know, they put, they had it good in the 1920s. If this, this is, was my lunch, I would have been like, who doesn't love grilled please, cheese? Please, let me get second. If I was a kid and I got this to school lunch, five apples. Five apples, I agree. I mean, this is, who you can't go wrong with grilled cheese sandwich. Let's just go ahead and give the vegetable a try. Let's try it. Bland, boring. Tastes the same as it did in 1920, I'm sure. Let's head into the next decade. Okay, but you could add some flavor to the vegetables with maybe a sauce. So plus one for vegetables, but also just especially with kids, flavor is so important in what you're feeding them. So you can see they both loved the grilled cheese. It probably would go over really well in a school cafeteria even today, just because it's yummy. 10 years later, we're in the 1930s, where a school lunch costs about 10 cents, and a refrigerator looks like this. This is the Great Depression era where most schools could not afford providing hot lunches for their students. So they went with something cheap and easy, like a vegetable soup. This was something that they could make in big batches and was very inexpensive to make. They also provided peanut butter sandwiches. I know it's kind of weird. I was expecting peanut butter and jelly, but they were just doing peanut butter sandwiches. So in the 1930s, they served up a hot vegetable soup 
soup with a peanut butter sandwich, an apple, and milk. 1930, keep in mind, this was the Great Depression era. You remember what I said? So they had to keep... I actually think that looks really good and sort of speaks to how you can have a healthy meal or a decently nutritious meal on a budget. Um, the vegetable soup in this video looks just like vegetable broth, which can still have a fair amount of nutrients, but if we could have added some beans or maybe some noodles or vegetable, actual vegetables to the soup, that would make it a little more filling and nutritious. The peanut butter sandwich, I love peanut butter is one of my favorite foods. So again, today I would love to see that on whole grain bread. Maybe we add a little bit of jelly to make it more palatable for kids, but you're getting some protein and healthy fats and fiber in the peanut butter. And it's a really budget friendly way to up the nutrition of some of your meals. So love that they went with peanut butter here. The apple also looks great. You're getting fresh fruit and again with milk. So I think a lot of times when people think of budget foods, they think they can't eat healthy. And while of course it's much easier to eat healthy when you have an unlimited budget. We don't have to follow all the really expensive wellness trends. We can make some smart choices like frozen vegetables or apples, which are less expensive than something like fresh berries and using peanut butter on sandwiches when we're on a budget. So this doesn't look that bad for being in the era of the Great Depression. I'll also just note, my grandmother was a child in the Great Depression and she was so smart about saving food and not letting it go to waste. So those are some other things you can do to help yourself save money on grocery costs. So just check your food labels, make sure what you're buying, you have a plan to use it up, freeze things you're not gonna eat or make them into a soup or something like that to help yourself save money on your overall grocery budget and not let that hard earned grocery money go to waste in the trash. They had to keep things a little simple. I don't know about this whole peanut butter and soup combo. <laughs> Seems a little weird to me, but let's just give it a shot. Let's start with the soup. Mm. Mm. This is gonna be kind of... Not bad. Yeah. I mean, it's a simple soup. They had to just make a whole batch of it and just hand them out to kids left to right. So it's not bad. Let's, let's combo this with the... It's just peanut butter sandwich. It's not peanut butter jelly. All right, let's take a shot. I don't think he likes peanut butter as much as I like peanut butter because he seems really disappointed there's no jelly. Very dry. Yeah. Okay, if I'm in the 1930s, Great Depression, things are tough. I'm not mad. I'm gonna rate this a three out of five. Yeah, three out of five, I can agree with that. Cool. On to the next. We've made it to 1940, where a school lunch costs about 22 cents and a refrigerator looks like this. In the 1940s, every US state had federally sponsored lunch programs. And they made this one dish called cream chipped beef. And all it is, is you heat up some butter, flour, milk, and you chop up this dried beef. I've never even seen this item in my life before. You chop that up and you pour that into the milk mixture and then just pour that over toast. So in the 1940s, they provided cream chipped beef, rice pudding, vegetables, and some milk. We are in 1940 and this cream chipped beef just... All right, the lunch honestly doesn't look that bad. I'm guessing that using dried beef, which is a shelf stable ingredient, is something that a lot of these school kitchens did because it was hard to have giant walk-in freezers or refrigerators. So it's probably speaking to some of the challenges of just operating a food service kitchen without a lot of equipment or money to upgrade your equipment. That said, whenever you are making meat shelf stable, it tends to be really high in sodium. That's what helps preserve it. So you're gonna get a lot of extra salt there. Um, serving it in a cream sauce, Again, I'm just looking at that and my kids would probably not eat it, but you are getting some nutrients into kids with protein, iron in the beef, um, and you're serving it over bread. Again, would love to see that be a whole grain bread for kiddos. The frozen vegetables on the side, you already know I love, and the glass of milk for some more protein and calcium. Rice pudding, I might swap out for, again, something with fruit or just a little bit less sugar here on the side so that they're getting a little more of that variety. And most kids love fruit, so it is a great way to get some of those vitamins and minerals and antioxidants into little kids' bellies. Cream chipped beef just looks, smells bad, it looks bad. I don't know what they were thinking at the time, but this is actually the era where all schools had like lunch programs. Let's go in with the first bite. Cheers, man, cheers. Bro. They don't look excited to try this one. Cheers, bro. Ooh. Whoa, that beef is salty, wow, huh? <laughs> Brian can't handle it. <laughs> you all right? It's not pleasant at all. If I was in the 1940s, I wouldn't be looking forward for the cream chip, but definitely that rice pudding. Oh, 
yeah, I would be definitely looking forward to that and probably not touching the cream chipped beef. I, I have to give this a one apple rating. I agree. Yeah. Don't make this at home. <laughs> yeah, I could see why they're not the biggest fans of that like creamy dried beef sandwich. But they did mention how they would just eat the rice pudding. And I think it's important to note that when you put foods in front of kids, they're sort of responsible for deciding what they're gonna eat. So when you're making a cafeteria menu, you have to give thought to like, are the kids actually gonna eat this or are they not? And a lot of times the healthier stuff or the more unique dishes don't get eaten. It sort of ends up in the trash. So if all your child was eating was rice pudding, then this wouldn't necessarily be a super well-balanced plate. That said, you still wanna offer lots of different foods because we wanna offer that exposure. Um, so the nice thing about school lunches is they probably weren't serving this every single day. There was probably variation throughout the week. So maybe Mondays was chip beef sandwich day. Tuesdays might've been something entirely different. <laughs> Don't make this at home. Yeah. Let's hope the next decade is better. We're now in the 1950s. The population has grown so much because of the baby boomer era. That's where the term boomers came from. And an average meal costs about 35 cents. And this is what refrigerators look like. And thanks to the population increase, meatloaf was introduced in school in order to feed all the kids. It was easy to make in big batches. It was filling and nutritious. It was also really simple to make and it didn't take any special equipment. Also as a side dish, they served tomato wedges. It's kind of weird, but maybe they thought it was healthy. So in the 1950s, school lunches was meatloaf, tomato wedges, jello, and milk. Milk has. I love seeing the meatloaf here. We're getting a fresher form of the beef and then cooking it up with some veggies and flavors. So meatloaf is gonna give kids protein, it's gonna give kids iron, there's other vitamins and minerals in beef. I love seeing a fresh vegetable on the side. Again, Raw tomato wedges might be a tough sell for a lot of kids, although there's lots of farm to school programs these days where kids might be have a hand at growing some of those fresh vegetables. And when kids can see them growing, they're more likely to eat them. The milk, again, protein, calcium. The jello, I'm not quite sure about because it's not giving a lot of nutrients. It's just pretty much sugar and food coloring and some flavors. So would love to see a more nutritious side there. I feel like that could easily be swapped out for applesauce. And then I'm so curious what happened in the past few decades because we went from a sandwich served on two pieces of bread with a piece of bread on the side to no bread or grains on the plate. So again, maybe we could offer like a whole wheat roll on the side of the meatloaf for some kiddos to help just balance out the meal here. But it's not too shabby. And I bet kids would have liked and enjoyed this. So in the 1950s, school lunches was meatloaf, tomato wedges, jello, and milk. Milk has been a yeah. star in a lot of these decades. But let's go ahead and dig into the meatloaf and see how meatloaf. it is. Mm. I'm not mad at it. I don't know if I'm hungry or if it tastes really good. I'm not mad at it. If I was a kid in the 1950s and they gave me meatloaf for lunch, I'd be like, cool, it's meatloaf day. No. Palate cleanser. Yeah. <laughs> Tomato. I guess this is a palate cleanser. Mm. You know, the combination of tomato and meatloaf really works together. Mm. Food's starting to taste a little bit better. I, I actually like it. I'm gonna keep eating this. I give this five apples. Five apples? I give it five. So what do you give well, it? You're being quite quite generous. I'm gonna give it three and a half. Three and a half apples. Cause we got some better stuff coming up, so. Oh yeah. 1960, it's actually a really exciting year because of one reason, which I'm gonna tell you in a bit. An average school meal cost about 50 cents and a refrigerator looked like this. The 1960s is probably my favorite era because it's the first time pizza was added to the menu. And of course the pizzas came in squares. Pros I can just tell you, and this is still true today, that pizza is by far the most popular lunch day that I know about at school. Process and pre-packaged food also made its way into school kitchens, but in order to balance out the pizza, schools provided a simple salad as a side dish. This was actually the beginning of schools easing up on high nutritious meals. So in the 1960s, a school lunch was pizza, simple salad, chocolate pudding, and fruit juice. 1960, they finally introduced all right, 1960 is not looking too bad. I think pizza is just a hit with schools, so it doesn't surprise me that it's on school food menus once a week still through today. Pizza is just really easy to feed kids and they pretty much all love it. So if we could again sneak some whole grains into that crust maybe, or consider trying some veggies on top or letting kids maybe pick between a couple of different options, love to see it, but you are getting some of that protein in the cheese. And then it is made with tomato sauce, which I think in some schools counts as a vegetable, but I usually don't count it as one. 
I love the salad on the side. That's a tip I give grownups all the time. Hey, if you wanna have a pizza night, let's serve it with some salads. You can still enjoy the pizza and get some of those nutrient rich veggies on the side. Chocolate pudding here, I probably would choose something else. Maybe again, a piece of fresh fruit and I'd likely choose the fresh fruit over serving it as juice. However, juice does have some of the antioxidants and the vitamins that are found in fruits. It's just that you're missing that fiber component of fruits, but it is better for you than some other sugar sweetened beverages. And of course, kids do love juice, but we do wanna keep those portions limited for kiddos. So I would love to see a different beverage offered here at lunch. Again, I think the pizza would be a huge hit and maybe give the kids some energy through the afternoon, especially if they're able to, you know, eat the whole slice because they really enjoy it in their short lunch period time. So this looks nice. And of course, whenever we can have fresh vegetables on the plate, I love to see that as a dietitian. So hopefully we can encourage the kiddos to eat that salad. Maybe we have a yummy dressing that they like, and then they're more likely to try the salad. They finally introduced pizza to schools, my favorite era so far. So let's take a slice. And they were always square. Yeah, they were always square. Only cheese, never had pepperoni. Never pepperoni. I mean, you know, beggars can't be choosers. So let's just go ahead and take our first bite. Mmm, tastes just like it, right? Dude, it's, <laughs> it's so close to what we had in school. It's exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Another thing about school lunch is when you got this pizza, you didn't touch anything. Oh my gosh, they're so happy eating this pizza. I love to see it. We had in school. It's exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Another thing about school lunch is when you got this pizza, you didn't touch any of the other stuff. You were happy with your pizza. You ate this, you threw the rest away. But we're not kids anymore, so I'm gonna have some of this salad. You can have a salad. I'm, right. giving, I'm giving this five, five apples, easily. I gave Meatloaf five apples. I gotta give this five apples. I'm done with that salad, not touching it anymore. <laughs> See you guys in the 70s. Where disco was alive and well, nutrition wasn't a big thing, and an average school meal cost about 75 cents, and a refrigerator looked like this. In the 1970s, nutrition standards weakened throughout the decade. Because of all the cost-cutting measurements, it compromised the quality of meals and increased the amount of processed food like hamburger and french fries. As you can see, I'm using fresh meat, but schools got frozen, already cooked meat that just needs to get heated up. They all so the reason that schools were probably getting frozen meat that was already maybe preformed into patties is so it's easier to cook and again serve anywhere from like tens and dozens to hundreds of school lunches in a day. It doesn't change the nutrition of the meat. So it might alter the flavor a little bit. I don't think anyone's serving up like a thin, fully cooked frozen beef patties winning burger of the year, but you're still getting all the same nutrition in that frozen beef patty as you would if you bought ground beef and made your own burger at home. Also provided french fries as a side dish, which made the meal lack a lot of nutrition. So in the 1970s, school lunches was a hamburger, french fries, jello, and coke. We're fine. So I feel like if we were serving the cheeseburger here, there's actually some things we could do to make it a little bit more nutritious. I don't have a problem with the beef patty or the cheese. Again, those are giving the kids some protein and some calories. The beef's got some iron in it. We could serve it on a whole grain bun, maybe consider offering some fresh veggies on the side for toppings, which I know is a tough sell for kids, but nice to offer. And instead of a deep fried potato, maybe we could do an oven roasted potatoes with the skin on. So you're getting some more of the nutrients in the potatoes and they're just a little bit lighter as a side dish. So still can be like crispy and delicious as a potato side, but just not deep fried french fries. And then again, this is the first time we're seeing a soda being served as a beverage, which is why when people, you know, sort of harp on milk as a choice, I think like we, there's a lot worse we could do. So milk is again, delivering like protein and calcium. Soda's really just giving you added sugar. So I would swap out the soda for something else here, whether that's milk, water, or even fruit juice. And then again, can we get rid of the Jello cup, which is just some more added sugar and give those kids some fruit uh, on the side so that they have a little bit more nutrition on their plates. But otherwise this looks fairly filling. If nutrition was not a priority, I could see why they did the cheeseburger fries and soda route. But again, even if we were making budget cuts, I think there's still some ways we can bring nutrition back onto the plate, like with the frozen vegetables that we saw earlier or some of those more affordable fruits. We're finally here in the 70s. I'm excited, you know, pizza was fun, but burger, in my opinion, is better. Let's have a bite, let's go for it. I would never choose burger over pizza, but you know, he's excited. Perfectly cooked. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. <laughs> Mm -hmm. The 70s was well done. You could definitely 
taste the dryness of it. We're not complaining because we're not having pea soup. <laughs> And of course they gave french fries, which is awesome. Love that. Perfect mm -hmm. fry, great meal, all in all. Mm -hmm. Five apples? I give this five apples. I'll skip the jello if I was, but the Coke, I'm happy about that too. Five apples for sure. All right, on to the next. Amazing. Now we're in 1980. Back to the Future just came out. One of my favorite movies. An average school meal cost about $1 and a refrigerator looked like this. In the 1980s, nutritional standards got- Loving this 80s music here. Uh, even worse, school lunch programs got a budget cut of a billion dollars. Because of the budget cuts, even more processed foods made it into school kitchens. They provided kids with chicken nuggets because the process of making them was really simple and all they had to do is just heat it up in the oven. So in the 1980s, school lunches were chicken nuggets, french fries, vanilla pudding, and coke. All right, that's sort of disheartening to hear about the budget cuts, but obviously when your budget gets cut, you are a little more restricted in what you can serve. I don't even hate seeing chicken nuggets here. They're processed, but it's giving kids some protein. And again, it's a really kid-friendly option. So I feel like kids are more likely to choose chicken nuggets over some other types of protein foods. But if we could take those chicken nuggets that we just got because we're on a budget and we don't have the same amount of money to do food prep, and then maybe not serve them with a french fry and vanilla pudding and soda, right? So like keep the chicken nuggets, can we add a vegetable, a fresh fruit, and maybe a glass of milk? And then you've got a more well-rounded meal that is kid-friendly and you're able to get some more nutrients on the plate. So I love the 80s, but we could have done a little bit better with this cool lunch and Coke. And here it is, the 1980 school cafeteria food. Like I said, they kind of gave up on the whole health thing. Budgets got cut, so they're just like, feed them whatever. Cheers. That's the spirit. Yeah. Mm, bomb. I love it. Interestingly, they gave us vanilla pudding, which we've had it in the past decades, but again, doesn't seem like the healthiest option, but let's go ahead and give that a shot. Cheers. Pure sugar. <laughs> yeah, I think my rating on this, because the pudding was whack, um, I'm gonna go ahead and give this three and a half apples. Three and a half apples. I give it a four apples because chicken nuggets, fries, and Coke kind of kept everything afloat. As far as like a kid that doesn't care about his health. Interesting that he's saying kids might not care about their health here. I think that's very true. A lot of kids are not making food choices based on cholesterol numbers or how they'll feel later. But I think we can teach kids about nutrition in really kid-friendly ways. So focus on all the cool things food can do for our bodies. You know, like if you eat carrots, it can help your eyes or eating protein helps you grow big, strong muscles. That helps kids be a little more interested in the foods that they're eating and sort of what happens in their bodies. And again, always done in like a really positive and age appropriate way for kids. The other way I think kids can get really excited about nutrition is when you get them involved in the kitchen or get them involved in growing food. So agree that most kids are gonna look at chicken nuggets and soda and french fries and be happy about it, but there are small things we can do to get kids a little more engaged with how food interacts with their bodies. Let's go see what the 90s have in store for us. And this decade is actually our decade. That's right. <laughs> Let's go. This is when the internet became super popular and a average meal cost about $1.50 and a refrigerator looked like this. You're probably wondering to yourself, why are we in a car? And that's because of one reason. In the 1990s, it was the peak of unhealthy meals. Schools allowed McDonald's and other fast food restaurants to sell their products in school. This would allow school cafeterias to ease up on making nutritional food for students and focus on making side dishes and more snack items. So in the 1990s, school lunches was McDonald's, simple salad, a fruit cocktail, and Powerade. Here it is. Okay, I was eating a lot of school lunch in the 90s and I never remember getting McDonald's, but I'm guessing it probably happened at some schools on some days. The McDonald's cheeseburger is not gonna be that much different than the cheeseburger that we saw that the school food service kitchen was making. So in that sense, you're gonna get that beef patty, that slice of cheese, and the bun. If we could again make that whole grain or try to add some nutrition to the burger, I'd love to see it. The salad on the side, loving the fresh vegetables here. The fruit cocktail is interesting because some fruit cocktails canned in heavy syrup. So there's gonna be a lot of added sugar mixed in and some is made with 
fruit juice. So if you choose canned fruit that's canned in fruit juice, it's actually a really affordable, easy, no prep required, healthy option. Again, so stay away from those candid light syrups or heavy syrups to reduce added sugar. And then Powerade on the side or that beverage on the side, the sports drink. Most kids at school lunch don't need a sports drink, so they have their place. If you're doing you know, high intensity activity or kids are running around outside for a long time, but when you're not doing that, you could easily just drink again milk or water or even fruit juice here to get those vitamins that's found in juice. So I'd love to see a beverage swap, get some canned fruit without added sugar, keep the fresh veggies, and then again, <laughs> I'm just shocked to see McDonald's on the plate, but I'm sure it did happen. So again, cheeseburger, just think about ways you can add nutrition to that and still keep it kid-friendly. Here it is, the 1990 school lunch that we used to get. Yeah. Now, one thing to note, we didn't always get McDonald's. That was like a special day. That, yeah. All right. Oh, opening up this wrapper, I was super excited as a yeah. kid. It's just like a super simple burger. I was always excited. Here we go. <laughs> I love that they're sharing, like and one's taking a bite of one side of the burger and the other one's taking a bite of the other side of the burger, keeping everything nice and food safe over here during their taste test. This is the best. I want to point out one more thing. Remember the Powerade? For me, Powerade always <clears throat> came second to Gatorade, so I was always kind of bummed when I got Powerade. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm gonna take a sip. Yeah. You're good? I'm gonna get off the Powerade. Yeah, that's good. And then the fruit cocktail. I remember this, it came in little, Cups, plastic cups. I remember I was like, I'm being so healthy by eating this. <laughs> they thought this was healthy, but it's just pure sugar, but it's absolutely delicious. So I'm guessing they got the fruit cocktail that's canned in a syrup and not in its juice. So just something to keep in mind as you're purchasing those little snack cups of fruit or canned fruit. I would rate this five apples because it's McDonald's. I was always excited about it. I'm gonna give it four apples. As a little kid, five apples times a million. Like I would've been so stoked to get this. All right. Yeah. Let's mm -hmm. hop over to the next decade. Let's go. 2000, welcome to the millennium. An average school meal cost about $2, and this is what a refrigerator looked like. In the 2000s, the government and schools started noticing a concerning rise of obesity. And because of that, many schools started providing healthier food options like grilled chicken. The chicken was simply seasoned with salt and pepper. Nothing special, but it was the first step towards a more nutritious meal. They also cut back on a lot of desserts and offered fresh fruits instead. So in the 2000s, School lunches was grilled chicken, celery and carrots, fresh fruits, and milk. All right, here it is. That looks really healthy. I love seeing grilled chicken on the plate. I love seeing the fresh vegetables. I think those fresh, raw, crunchy vegetables like carrots, celery, even peppers and cucumbers, that can be a great option for kids who are a little bit picky or maybe don't like the taste of cooked vegetables. I'd love to see this served with like a dip on the side to make them even more exciting, whether it's ranch or guacamole or hummus. The fresh fruit salad looks beautiful. We're seeing berries and grapes, but again, if budget was an option, something like applesauce could also be a nice alternative or a fresh apple. And then the glass of milk is giving a little extra protein and calcium here. We are not seeing any whole grains on the plate, so that could be an option too. Maybe it's a piece of whole grain bread or a little roll on the side so that there's just a little more um, variety and balance on the plate for these kiddos, or maybe they can make a mini sandwich with the grilled chicken if they want. It is the 2000 meal. Um, I love how milk made a comeback. They brought fresh fruits, veggies, and grilled chicken. Kind of a boring meal. Pretty healthy. Cheers. Cheers. Boring and healthy don't have to go together though. We can add a little excitement on the plate. Not bad. Never gets old. Good, simple chicken. Veggies were never exciting for me as a kid. Overall, I think I give this meal two apples because- Really? Yeah, because as an adult, I'll give it more, but as, as a kid, I give it two apples because it just wasn't exciting. Yeah, if we're going from the perspective of a kid, this sucks, I'm giving it one apple. <laughs> yeah. We got one more decade left, let's go see what it's all about. We finally made it to our last decade, the 2010s. This is the rise of social media, the platform that you're watching me through, and an average school meal costs about $2.50, and this is what a refrigerator looks like. In 2010, lunch programs got an overhaul, the reduction of processed foods began and more schools focused heavily on providing whole fresh foods like turkey or bologna wraps. The wrap All right, I'm gonna let him finish, but I don't know that we can call bologna a whole fresh food. We'll see what he has to say here. 
apps were nothing special, just some tortilla, meat, and cheese. So in 2010, school lunches was a simple wrap, salad, yogurt, and water. And here it is, the 2010 school lunch. All right, I don't mind seeing the wrap on the plate, but if we're using ultra processed cold cuts, it's not exactly whole foods. Even turkey, sliced deli turkey would be a better option here than things like bologna or ham that just have a little bit more processing and tend to be higher in sodium. Um, but we've got meat, cheese wrapped up in a tortilla. Again, would love to see that swap for maybe a whole grain tortilla, whether that's whole wheat or even a corn tortilla as an option and even adding on the side like a sauce packet so kids could choose if they want mayonnaise or mustard, just something to add a little bit of flavor to the sandwich to make it more appealing. I'm liking the salad. Maybe again, we could add tomatoes or a different vegetable on top. Plain yogurt, which is what this looks like, is a tough sell for kids because it's not sweet at all. So while I always recommend it for adults, maybe mixing in a little bit of sweetened yogurt for some flavor or just serving it with some fresh fruit or even a granola to make it a little more appealing for those younger taste buds. And then I love to see the water. Kids, you know, they need to stay hydrated throughout the day and water is a great way to do it. And so that's not a bad beverage choice with meals for little kids or big kids or any kids or adults but this looks pretty decent um, as a school lunch option. Lunch. They got really healthy with this one. We got yogurt, simple salad, and a wrap. But let's go ahead and give this wrap a try and see if it's good. It's just a simple wrap. It's kind of boring. Yeah. If I was in school, I'd be like, this sucks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can't wait to get home. Like That's why you need condiments on your sandwich. Eat pizza. Eat, yeah, can we get pizza, mom? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they also gave yogurt, so I'm gonna give that a shot, because, again, like, nothing really kicks here, but I guess it's all for the betterment of, like, kids' health. Yeah. As far as taste goes, I'm gonna give this a one apple. I, you know, I, I wanna give them one apple, but you gotta appreciate, make it healthier for the kids. Definitely. So two apples for me. Hey. <laughs> And that was a hundred years of school lunches. Let me know if I got your decade right and let me know what you guys eat at your school in the comments. I'll see you in the next one. Awesome. We made it through a century of school lunches, which was a lot. I felt like we hit some peaks and valleys, but got to see a really interesting mix of different lunches. And I know that people who work in school cafeterias are working really hard to get nutritious foods on the plates of our kiddos. And it is a super challenging job. So super appreciative of anyone who's helping cook school lunches. I also know school lunches and the school breakfast program can be a really important source of nutrition in kiddos' diets. So even if we're not always seeing the healthiest options on plates, a lot of kids in America just rely on school food for a source of nutrition and calories and food in their day. So it's a really important meal. As far as looking forward, because we're into the 2020s now, what I love to continue to see on kids' plates is just that variety and balance. So maybe it is a sandwich on whole grain bread with some turkey and lettuce, maybe a yummy like honey mustard to make it a little more appealing. I'd probably serve that with some cucumber slices on the side with a little dip to get kids excited about dipping those vegetables and a fresh fruit because most kids love fruit. It's naturally sweet and still gives a lot of nutrition. And I'm probably throw a glass of milk on the side to get them a little more energy and calories. If you've ever been to a school cafeteria or heard from your own kiddos, it's really short amount of time that they have to eat. So giving them a lot of different options and a lot of variety and things that can be eaten really quickly is important, especially because they're not just eating by themselves. They wanna chat with their friends and say hi. It's a very social time, which is great, but cuts in even more to the amount of time they have to eat. So anything we can do to get some extra nutrition onto those trays, I'm all about it. And of course, when it comes to feeding kids and even adults, it's all about that balance of giving them some of their favorite foods, the ones they get excited about, whether that's pizza and chicken nuggets or a cheeseburger, and then adding some more nutritious options on the side. So they're excited, happy about the food, more likely to try other things on their plate, and still, again, getting those those calories that they need for energy throughout the school day, hopefully also some protein, fiber, and other vitamins in things like fruit and vegetables. 
That's all on school lunches for today, but if there's other videos you'd like to see on lunches for kids or adults, let us know in the comments down below. And thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for more from me and Healthline.